having, it, uh, I believe, a solid uh, friendship would give you the support that you need during those tough times in your life. And having that person you can rely on is, is huge. I guess because it would be how you feel in your ups and downs. If, if, you're, if you're in a good, strong relationship, you'd be mentally stable and happy. And if you were in a bad relationship or a friendship, it would put you on a lower um, a lower self self uh, feeling and maybe even towards depression. Having a good friend is so important to me because if I'm down and out, I can always turn to my best friend. She's always there for me. Numerous studies have shown that a friendship can really boost our self-esteem, our mood, and just increase overall happiness. Because he plays with me. A friendship can change my mood in life from losing a friend or gaining a friend. Um, I think that losing a friend can really it, it impact me like negatively, but I think that gaining a friend means a lot to me and can make me really happy. A friendship can change my mental health because if they're always positive, if they're always doing things, hanging out with you, you'll, you're just going to be happy in your mindset that you're in with that person. Uh, friendships can change your mood. Just being around people can always be uplifting, can always help out. Um, being alone too much can be a bad thing for your mental health, so I think friends definitely help. Hi. Some traits in a friend that makes my mood change and changes my life are probably when my friends are there for me. Um, I really appreciate it, and I just like them being there for me, caring about me. Um, and just knowing that they're always there if I need them, that really impacts my life and changes it for the better. Somebody that cares, uh, somebody that obviously listens, that's probably the biggest trait I would say to anybody that, you know, especially in tough times during mental health, that listening is the hugest part. I feel like there's different traits for different personalities, but above all, having someone who is non-judgmental and really listens and validates when you talk to them about your feelings. Well, it would be how they act, their traits on if they're loyal, truthful, honest, tactful, um, if they, you know, if they have courage, if they have sensibility, just all the different traits would add up to how that friendship is strong or if it's weak? Uh, I don't know. Just having someone to talk to. Be there. Hang out. Just, I don't know. By them being happy all the time and just being there. Like I said, just being there for you is really upbeat and um, you don't feel alone. You always have someone by your side. And I might have a lot of acquaintances, but I only got maybe two real good friends that I feel that way about. Um, definitely being positive all the time, somebody that helps you um, with whatever you're going through, somebody that comforts you. Um, basically somebody who's all around there, treats you more like family than they do as a friend. From my perspective, at my age, I would listen to them and, t and try to dive deeper into what they're going through to understand it. But for students, I would say that once they know somebody is struggling, to let an adult know. So if you're in the school system, we have two school social workers and three guidance counselors. So coming down here, we'll be able to help them and guide them to what they need. Talk to them and comfort them. Well, my best friend does have a... Uh mental health problem and she could call me anytime day and night and I'm always there for her to lift her spirits and she has a lot of um, issues to deal with and I'm always there for her. Uh, talk to them and find out what is the root of the problem. Try to evaluate uh, by reviewing, researching and reviewing what they've told you uh, to align you know a professional to be able to 
talk to them and counsel them and maybe put them in a program if need be? I think there is a lot of ways that you can help a friend that's struggling with their mental health. Above all, you should remember that you aren't their mental health professional, you're not their therapist, and you don't have to do everything because sometimes that can um, impact our own me mental health negatively. I think things you can do is if they do open up to you, if they do start talking to you, really listen to them, um, validate whatever it is that they're feeling. You don't have to agree with it. Uh, don't challenge what they're saying, but then see if there's ways that you can uh, redirect or offer some support. Maybe it's even a positive distraction, going outside, taking a walk with them. I think that's great. Um, the first thing that I would do is go to them directly and ask them if they want help. Obviously ask the question over and over again if they're not giving in. Then they don't want to talk about it and that's perfectly fine. What you need to do is comfort them, make them feel happy in, any, in every way. And if it's still not working and stuff is getting harder and harder and they're doing things that are questionable, then you go to an adult or you go to their parents and you tell them. I would probably talk to them and just make sure like they know that I'm always there if they need it and that I care about them incredibly and if they need anything at all that they can always talk to me and I'll always be there for them. I would just make sure that they really understand that. The first thing I go to when I'm feeling down and alone probably music I love music like it literally can change my mood incredibly like within five songs it is so awesome and another thing I'd probably go to is movies or shows you know just turning on like one of my favorite shows or like a comfort episode um, really changes my mood for the better personally me first thing I do down a lot, I, I talk about my feelings so that's the first thing I would do is talk about it with a, a friend or my wife or somebody very close to me. I don't keep anything in. That's what I would tell anybody. Do not keep your feelings in. Uh, if I was down and alone, I would, uh, my inner self first to make sure that I talk to myself about what the problem is and then maybe seek out somebody else outside to talk to, whether it's a spouse or a teacher or a um, you know, a boss, and then uh, from there to a doctor or somebody that runs a program, a counselor that you could get uh, mental health help and awareness um, to evaluate you and assist you. Um, for me, it's actually what I'm doing right now. It would be going outside. So for me, that's a really big mental health booster. I do also lean on friends in times of need, but sometimes I need to kind of take my own time with my own self and then I might check in with one of my siblings who are my best friends or a close friend. I guess my dog, you know, he's, he's always there, always happy, always welcoming. Good dog. Play hugs. Actually, my best friend, we talk two, three o'clock in the morning and uh, we always end up laughing and it doesn't feel so dire. Go to a friend. Um, the first thing that I would go to is probably a journal because when you write things down about how you're feeling, you can relook at it and think about why you felt that way. It, it makes you feel better and then you can go and tell one of your friends or your family members. Golf. I'd say golf. Yep. Some of the some of the activities would be reading, uh, doing some research on topics like these, um, prayer, uh, maybe prayer for for yourself and your inner self, um, talking through family time to make sure that at family dinners and and uh, relationships within your in a family, uh, the core of your self being. So to make sure. You, you keep those strong and at the forefront because that will that will guide guide the ship through for, for you in, in life. 
So there's a number of different things I might do with friends. Sometimes I've been on some amazing hiking journeys and road trips with some friends. Um, other times it's really just grabbing a bite to eat or really uh, celebrating a lot of milestones. So a lot of birthdays, weddings, babies, and fun things like that. Uh, I play tag with my friends. Uh, we love going to the movies together, plays, um, sitting in the park, just talking for the day, getting together. And actually we've had a few pajama parties. Going places with them and hanging out with them. Um, some activities I do with friends that boost my mood is probably just hang around with them and be just be there with them. Um, we do things like watch movies, listen to music, go for like car rides, which are really fun. Um, I just like hanging out with them, honestly. They make, my, make me laugh, they make me happy and everything. Um, watching sports, just chilling. Play outside for recess. Um, definitely go out, you know, maybe go out to a restaurant or basically anywhere that me and my friends go, we can have a fun time because we're with each other and that's all that matters. Absolutely, they don't fade, absolutely not. I've been friends with some of my kids from growing up since kindergarten and they're right there on the speed dial, so absolutely not, it doesn't affect my mental health. I think friendships do slowly fade, but uh, affecting your mental health, I'm not sure about that. I'm still young, nimble, got a, got a lot of life left in me. Uh, I think as, as you grow from teenage years, through your 20s you do, you pick and choose um, the path you want to go on and who you want to associate yourself with and who's caring and loving and dedicated and trustworthy. And those are the ones that become your best, closest friends like family. I think friendships will always impact our mental health. I think sometimes it really is more to do with personality versus age. Some of us kind of require a little bit more solitude than others but by nature, we're all uh, social beings. So I think as we age, we still have that desire to connect with other people and friends. Yes, I think that because when you're 13 and you have friends, all it is is drama and you have a big group and then it goes to a little group and then you have none and then you create more. And those friends that you create when you're older stick with you because you've already learned from the past relationships and friendships that the stuff that they were doing shouldn't be happening when you're 17. And if it is, then you need to change your friends. I think that as I get older, um, friendships still will impact my mental health incredibly. I think that if I lose someone that I really cared about in the future, I will be incredibly impacted by it, especially sad. Um, I think that friendships will always have a great impact over my life, no matter how old I am. And yeah. Not my situation. I'm 77 and uh, we've been friends since we've been 15 years old. So nothing would ever, she's more than a sister to me. I think schools are doing it the best they can with what they're provided with. Um, I don't think any, dish, uh, any school in any district whether it's the Commonwealth or across the, the US, we could always be doing more, but in this school, they've come a long way, especially hiring the two schools, uh, social workers and the guidance counselors, we, you know, myself coming in, having that individual counseling background that can offer that support to you when they're busy. I think schools are really trying when it comes to mental health. I think there's a lot of barriers they face. Sadly, a lot of it is money. A lot of it is people don't always believe that schools should be the hub for mental health support. Um, I strongly feel that schools should continue to advocate to have mental health support within their school system. I think they're on the front lines to really helping kids through those difficult challenges and years. I do not think schools do enough for mental health awareness. I think that there's so much more that they can do to improve and to help actually help kids. Um, I think that what they do now is just not enough by any means and things should definitely change in the future. I don't think you can ever have enough mental health awareness. I think in the times we live in, 
how fast it is and how much social media and media we live in, I think we uh, definitely are behind on programs. Um, I don't. I think that they act like they care and they always tell you that you can always go to them and um, you can always talk to them about stuff, but once you do it, all they do is tell you like, hey, if you ever need anything else, come back, but they don't really do anything. They just tell your parents and then they send you off to do whatever you need. But I definitely think that that needs to be addressed more in schools and there needs to be more of a system with it. No. Actually, school is where the bullying goes on, the drama, and it's never taken care of in the proper way. Um, not really. Uh, I mean, they talk about it every once in a while, but overall, not much. No. Because they act like they care but they really don't like do anything to show that they care. That would be my wife. <laughs> Definitely my friend Victoria Masia. She is my best friend and she has been since kindergarten and we've had our offs and ons, our ups and downs. And to this day, she's still my friend senior year and Whenever I'm with her, I feel happy, I feel positive, um, and it just shows that no matter who you're friends with or whatever, if you go through the ups and downs and you guys still come back to each other, then you know that that's going to be your friend for the rest of your life. Um, I consider my dad, even though he's no longer living, a true friend that I will have always because I still search for his guidance. Um, he was someone that was really a role model and a mentor. He always listened and kind of validated whatever I was going through. So I often kind of channel his, his spirit or what I think he might offer me when it comes to advice. So I feel I still seek his guidance um, just in a very different way now. Frankie, because she's always been there for me. My girlfriend Elaine, actually they call us Lucy and Ethel and she's Lucy and uh, she's always there for me. Because Riley's my best friend. One friend that helps me grow physically and mentally as a person, I would say, is my friend Victoria Messia. Um, we've been friends for so long, and she's just always been there for me, and she's just so sweet and funny and knows how to make me laugh in the perfect moments, and I just love hanging out with her. Uh, that, would, uh, that would be my wife. We uh, stay in communication with all the the things we need to talk about and we make sure that we aren't um, leaving each other behind especially with social media and we make sure that our family time is our family time. And Kenzie's my best friend too. I guess I have to say Jacob Susan. you know he's always pushing me to be better always telling me to go to the gym and be better always helping my confidence. He's a good friend. <laughs> friends I have now are some of the um, strongest. They're like family. Uh, and you know, on a handful, um, they, they, they are for the rest of my life, I hope. Well, if they've been around for the last 45 years, I don't see them going anywhere right now. So absolutely. Even the ones that I've, you know, become close within the last 10, 15 years. Absolutely. Absolutely. They mean a lot to me. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, I don't really think many of my friends are going very far, so I'll probably be friends with them. Most of them. Um, I really do see myself being friends uh, with the same friends. I have a lot of friends that we might not see each other a lot, maybe we don't live close together, but when we do come back and reconnect, it's as if no time has passed. And a lot of my friends are actually my si siblings, so um, I will see them forever and hopefully get to continue those friendships. I'd say that some of my friends, I can see myself being still friends with them in the next five years, but some of them I just, I don't know, honestly, it's really a toss up. Like it's, it all just depends on what happens. Yes, because we're fun, we're positive, we love the same things. And even if we do separate for a little while, we always go back to each other because we're comfortable with each other and each other's attitudes.
Oh, absolutely. I think going to graduate school for my master's in social work at Boston University was life changing for me. Understanding back in 2005 to 2008, like it, mental health wasn't on the forefront as it is now, but it definitely changed the way I, I approached um, people and, and students, that's for sure. Well, yes, I lost my husband and I was staying in. I didn't want to go out and that went on for six, seven, eight months. And when I started going out with my friends again, it made the whole, a whole difference in my life. Um, going to a new school. Um, I think the one that first pops into my brain is really when I made the decision to leave full-time work and ultimately be home with my kids while they're young full-time. That was something that I really did. Uh, there was a lot of reasons why, but at the forefront was really my own mental health and that of my children who I feel I have to put first. There's actually been an experience, yeah. Um, one time, one of my friends said something really weird to me um, and it made me really upset but it also helped me improve and kind of move away from the kind of people who would do something like that to me. Um, and ever since then, I've been much happier than I was uh, before. And it's not that I appreciate that that happened, but if that didn't happen, I would probably still be where I was when it did happen. So I kind of am slightly grateful for it, I guess, because it's made me the better person that I am today. Um, yes, getting rid of old friends and creating new ones because when you do that, you, you move on to the next chapter in your life and also definitely moving schools was a big one and once you have a whole separate life that you move to, it creates a whole bigger picture for your future. I think social media sometimes portrays mental health in a way that it shouldn't and it's deceiving especially for kids and, and adults and the, sometimes the message is uh, not conveyed the way I would like to see it. I don't like social media, media at all it's just too much drama and um, I just don't like it. Um, you know I don't really use social media that much on occasion you know I'll scroll through but it doesn't really affect my mental health. Um, when I hear those words, not too much good comes to mind. I think a lot of the research that's out there shows how negatively social media impacts our mental health, especially uh, from a young age. So for young people especially, and I think as a mom, I'm certainly going to try to shield my kids from social media and prolong that exposure for as long as possible um, until they can show me some counter research that social media actually helps our mental health, but I think it does more harm than good. When I hear the words social media and mental health, um, I think about how they are completely opposite and social media inf affects people's mental health incredibly with um, cyberbullying and just so many things like people comparing themselves to other people that they see on social media. I think that social media is a big, big reason why a lot of people have mental health issues today. Um, and I think that if we fix some things on there that it could definitely improve people's mental health. It creates a different version of people that aren't real. Um, just because I'm older, trouble, because social media can be trouble if it's used in the wrong way, and media can twist uh, the categories and topics and issues of the time, so you have to tread lightly and make sure that you don't fall into the trap of that. It also can be a useful tool if used the right way. So uh, it's great to send pitches to your grandparents and to talk to your parents and your parents can, you know, see where you are and make sure you're safe and things like that. And you can touch base with your siblings when they're away at school. But uh, when you get caught up in the, the apps, the different apps and, and take everything so seriously, it can change you into depression. Um, and really angry and anxiety, and that's the downfall of it. So uh, just to make sure that you, you are aware of that when you are using social media and watching media on TV. Um, I think about Instagram and TikTok and all the girls and the guys 
on there that are models and how they make themselves look fake and then girls that are my age or younger think that they need to look like that to be pretty and it it makes their self-esteem go down because if they don't look like that then they aren't pretty in their own eyes. To not be afraid to reach out and let people in, I think so many people, whether you're an you know, a adolescent or an adult, you tend to keep everything in. You don't want people knowing that you're struggling and, and that you got this and you know um, there's nothing wrong with getting help. I think that whether you go see a counselor or not, we all do counseling at some point of a day or a week because when we have a tough time, you talk to a parent, you talk to a friend, a cousin, it doesn't matter. You know, we all do some you know, form of therapy. This is Katherine Pont, school psychologist. I am Lucidia Gurley. I am Jackson Mallard. I am Gabriella Mallard. I am Ian Filippo. I am Olivia Mallard. I am Luke Sinaski. I am John Messia. I am Mr. Goulet.